Hello there, children. Gandalf the Graphing Wizard here talking to you about scatter plots and trend lines. Now here's a question. What is Gollum's favorite bird? A Smeagol! <laughs> First thing we're talking about is a scatter plot. It's a graph that relates two different sets of data by displaying them as ordered pairs. So in our first scatter plot here, we have the amount of condiments on a hot dog, where the amount of ketchup in fluid ounces is on your x-axis, whereas the amount of mustard in fluid ounces is on your y-axis. And now each of these points represents a hot dog. The x value in their ordered pair represents how much ketchup they put on the hot dog, and their y value in that ordered pair represents how much mustard they put on the hot dog. Same thing over here, except this time we have the amount of condiments on a cheese burger. Each of these points represents a single cheeseburger and the x value of that ordered pair represents the amount of ketchup whereas the y value of that ordered pair represents the amount of mustard that was on that cheeseburger. There's a little difference between the two graphs right and we'll get into how you describe the difference between these two scatter plots in a second. Correlation, that's a measure of relationship between two variables. So here you can see our different types of correlation. We have a perfect positive correlation, meaning that it forms a straight line that is going up and to the right. A strong positive correlation means that it is going up and to the right, but it does not form a straight line, but it's pretty close. It's getting towards a straight line. So it's a strong positive correlation. A weak positive correlation means that, yeah, the data looks like it's going up and to the right, but it's not anywhere near a line. It's just a little scattered out. So it's a weak positive correlation. No correlation means you can't tell whether it's going up and to the right or down and to the right. A weak negative correlation means that the data is going down and to the right, but nowhere near a straight line. A strong negative correlation means that it's getting pretty close to a straight line. You could draw a line through the data, but you can't necessarily draw a line connecting all of the points. Whereas a perfect negative correlation means the graph is going down and to the right, and you could draw a line through each of the points. Now a trend line or a line of best fit is a straight line that best represents the data on a scatter plot. This line may pass through some of the points, none of the points, or all of the points. A trend line or line of best fit, you are going to look at the data. And if it's going up and to the right, you are going to draw a line going through the middle of that data. Here in a perfect positive correlation, the line of best fit, the trend line, goes through all of the points. In a strong positive correlation, the data is a little scattered out. It's strong. It's not perfect. So you draw a line a trend line, a line of best fit that goes through the middle of that data. A weak positive correlation, you may not touch any of the points, but you can see that the data is going up and to the right, so your trend line, you just draw in the middle of that data. No correlation means you're likely not going to have a line of best fit. A weak negative correlation means that the scatter plot is going down and to the right, so you're going to draw a line going through the middle of those points. And you might not hit any of the points, and that's okay. It's just a trend line. It's where your graph is trending. A strong negative correlation, you're going to draw a line through the middle of that data. You might hit some points, you might hit no points, but you are putting that line in the middle of that data. A perfect negative correlation, the points are again going down and to the right, but they're in a straight line. So your trend line should go through all of the points in a perfect negative correlation. Why couldn't the hobbits get into Sauron's lair? They needed more doors! <laughs> Example time. Now, example one says examine these scatter plots and determine what type of relationship these scatter plots show. First, you want to tell, is the graph going up and to the right or down and to the right? I can't tell on this one. Because you can't tell, you would say that this graph has no correlation between the independent variable and dependent variable. For B, is this graph going up and to the right or down and to the right? It looks like it's going down and to the right, so it's going to be a negative correlation. Now, is it weak, strong, or perfect? Well, I can't draw a line through all the points, so it's not perfect. They're not really forming anywhere near a straight line. They're pretty scattered out. So I would say that this graph has a weak negative correlation. Part C, we first ask ourselves, are the points on the scatter plot going up and to the right or down and to the right? They're going up and to the right. That means it's a positive correlation. Now, is it a perfect positive, a strong positive, or a weak positive? Well, it looks like you can't draw a line through all of the points, so it's not perfect, but it's pretty close to a straight line, right? They're all pretty bunched up, pretty close together. So I would say this is a strong positive correlation. What do you call a wizard with a nine iron? Ken Golf. You try. 
at your first scatter plot, you ask yourself, are the points going up and to the right or down and to the right? Well, it looks like they're going up and to the right. So this is going to be a positive correlation. Now, is it perfect, strong, or weak? Well, they're not a straight line, so it's not perfect. Are they pretty close to a straight line? No, they're kind of scattered out, right? So I would say this would be a weak positive correlation. Here, are the points going up and to the right or down and to the right? Clearly down and to the right. Therefore, this is a negative correlation. Now, is it perfect, strong, or weak? Well, are they forming a straight line? Yeah, it looks like it, right? So I would say that this would be a perfect negative correlation. And then here, first we ask ourselves, is it going up and to the right or down and to the right? Well, it looks like the points are going down and to the right. So I would say this would be a negative correlation. Now we ask ourselves, is it perfect, strong, or weak? Well, they don't form an exact straight line like this one did. Do they form somewhat of a straight line? Are they pretty close to a straight line? Yeah, it looks like they're pretty bunched up together. So I would say that this would be a strong negative correlation. Now, example two says make a scatter plot of the data. What type of relationship does this scatter plot show? So here we have a table and in this table, we are given a set of ordered pairs. So we need to graph those ordered pairs. So first in our graph, we need to decide what's going to be on our X axis. What's going to be our Y axis. Let's think about this. It looks like the temperature would depend on whatever your latitude was, right? So we'll say this is going to be our dependent variable. This is going to be our independent variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the latitude for our X axis, our independent variable, and the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit is going to go as our dependent variable on our Y axis. Now we just plot each of these points. They're an ordered pair. This is X this is y so we go x comma y 35 comma 46 i go over 35 on my x-axis up 46 on my y-axis and i put a point 33 comma 52 go over 33 up 52 put a point 30 comma 67 i go over 30 up 67 and put a point 25 comma 76 i go over 25 up 76 put a point 43 comma 32 over 43 up 32 put a point 40 comma 37 over 40 up 37 put a point 39 comma 44 over 39 up 44 and put a point now we have graphed all of the points in our table now it's time to ask ourselves what type of relationship does the scatter plot show so are the points going up and to the right or down and to the right they're clearly going down and to the right so it's going to be a negative correlation now is it perfect strong or weak well if i were to draw a line through this data my line of best fit my trend line you can see that they're not in a straight line it's not a perfect negative correlation but they're pretty close to a line they're pretty close to forming a straight line those points therefore you would say that this is going to be a strong negative correlation what do you call a hobbit party a little get together <laughs> you try Okay, doing the same thing. First, we need to graph each of these points on a coordinate plane. Now, what is going to be our independent variable? What's going to be our dependent variable? Well, if we're looking at this, it looks like the dollar spent would depend on how many tacos you buy. So we're going to say tacos purchased are going to be our independent variable. So we'll put those on the X axis. And then dollar spent is going to go as our dependent variable on our Y axis. Now we can plot each of these points where these are our X values. These are our Y values. So 9, 27. We're going to go over to 9 and then up 27 and put a point then four comma 12 we go over four on our x-axis up 12 on our y-axis put a point and then five comma 15 we go over five on our x-axis up 15 on our y-axis put a point eight comma 24 we go over eight on our x-axis up 24 on our y-axis put a point and then two comma six we go over two on our x-axis up six on our y-axis put a point 15 comma 45 we go over 15 on our x-axis up 45 on our y-axis put a point and then 20 comma 60 we go over 20 on our x-axis up 60 on our axis put a point now we need to decide is the graph going up and to the right or down and to the right looks like it's clearly going up and to the right it's a positive correlation so is it perfect strong or weak if we draw a line through these points our line of best fit our trend line whoa it goes through all of the points because our trend line our line of best fit goes through all of the points it's going to be a perfect positive correlation now let's talk about writing the equation of a trend line. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plot the points from your table. So here's a table that we already dealt with, and we're going to plot those points. Here's what our graph looked like. Now, in order to write the equation of a trend line, the first thing we're going to do is draw a line that goes through the middle of your data points. So you are going to use your best judgment and draw a line that goes through the middle of your data points. Now that you have this line, what we're going to do is we're going to create the equation of this line. How do we do that? Well, in order to create the equation of a line remember you need a point and a slope so a points easy but how do I figure out the slope well I need two points on the line so let's go ahead and find two points on this line here's the deal people always do this you don't have to pick two of the points that were on your scatter plot you're trying to pick two points that are on your line so we're gonna pick two points that are on this given line 
Now from these points, we can figure out the slope. Do we remember the slope formula? Yeah, it's m is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So we pick one of these to be x sub 1, y sub 1, and the other one to be x sub 2, y sub 2. Doesn't matter which one you pick to be which. We plug each of these into their corresponding spot in the slope formula. We simplify, and we end up getting negative 7 over 3. So the slope of this line is equal to negative 7 over 3. Now, I can create the equation of the line using a point and a slope. I have my slope, and look, I have two points, so I can pick either one. So yeah, let's create the equation of our line using a point and a slope. So we're going to plug that into point slope form. y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. 35 is going to go in for x sub 1, 50 is going to go in for y sub 1, and negative 7 thirds is going to go in for your m. Now I have the point slope form of the equation of this line. Now I'm okay with this, but some teachers make you put it in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. If you have to put this in slope intercept form what you need to do is first distribute negative 7 thirds to the x and to the negative 35 negative 7 thirds times x is going to be negative 7 thirds x and then negative 7 thirds times negative 35 we treat negative 35 as negative 35 over 1 so you're going to multiply the 35 to the 7 in our numerator 3 to the 1 in our denominator and since a negative times a negative makes positive that's what this looks like again we're trying to get this in the form y equals mx plus b we need to get y equals by itself so in order to get this minus 50 to the the other side I add 50 to both sides that way these cancel out and over here when I add these two together I'm adding a fraction to an integer or a whole number in order to add a fraction to something they have to have the same denominator so 50 over 1 how do I get that to have a denominator of 3 well I multiply the numerator and denominator by 3 and I get 50 over 1 is the same as 150 over 3 now I can add these together because they have a common denominator what's 245 plus 150 that gives you 395 again your denominator stays the same whenever you add or subtract fractions boom I have the slope intercept and point slope form of the equation of my red trend line. And now the cool thing about having the equation of a trend line is it now allows you to figure out things that aren't in your table. If I want to figure out the temperature at a latitude of, let's say, 42, that's not in our table. What can I do? I can take 42 now and plug it in for X into one of these equations, and it'll give me what the temperature would be. That's what a trend line or equation of a line of best fit helps you do. Now, example three says make a scatter plot comparing the year and attendance at U.S. theme parks. Draw a trend line and write its equation. Estimate the attendance at U.S. theme parks in 2005. So here's what we need to do. First, it says make a scatter plot comparing the year and attendance at U.S. theme parks. So we have the year and attendance, which means it's giving us more information than we need. We don't need to worry about revenue. Next, we need to make that scatter plot. I'm assuming anytime you have time, like years or hours, that's going to go on your x axis. So we're going to put years on our x axis, and then attendance is going to be on your y axis because the attendance depends on what year it was. I can now plot my points from the table 1990, 253. I go over to 1990, up 253, and I put a point. 1992, 267. I go over to 1992, up 267, and I put a point. 1994, 267. Seven, put a point there. 1996, comma 290, I put a point. 1998, comma 300, I put a point. 2000, comma 317, put a point. 2002, comma 324, put a point. 2004, comma 328, put a point. And 2006, comma 335, put a point. There we go. We have graphed our scatter plot. What do we have to do next? We need to draw a trend line. So let's draw a trend line. We're going to draw a line that goes through these points as best as we can. Next, I'm going to choose two points on the line because I need the equation of my trend line. So first, we're going to figure out the slope. In order to figure out slope, we need two points on our trend line. Doesn't matter what the scatter plot points were. We're going to pick two points on our trend line. So let's say this point right here and this point right here. Now I have these two points. So from these two points, I can figure out the slope of my trend line. So I pick one of these points to be x sub 1 comma y sub 1 and the other one to be x sub 2 comma y sub 2. I'm going to plug them into their corresponding spot in the slope formula. 330 minus 250 goes in the numerator. 2004 minus 1990 goes in my denominator. Simplify this, and I get my slope is 40 over 7, or well, 40 sevenths. That's the slope of my green trend line here. Next, what I can do is I can plug in the point x sub 1 comma y sub 1 and the slope to my point slope form. In order to get the equation of my trend line, I need a point and a slope. Perfect. Now let's plug those into point slope form. y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. So 1990 goes in for my x sub 1, 250 goes in for my y sub 1, and then 40 sevenths goes in for my m. I am totally okay with you leaving this as your equation of your trend line. That is the equation of this green line. Perfect. We did it.
If your teacher requires you to put it in slope intercept form, what you have to do is you have to distribute this 47ths. We're going to take this 47ths and distribute it to the x and to the negative 1990. The whole point is we want to get y equals mx plus b. So we have to distribute this and then add our 250 to the other side. So let's distribute it. Again, if you're multiplying 47ths times negative 1990, just make negative 1990 over 1. That way you just multiply the numerators together and denominators together. That's what we got. Next, again, we need to get this negative 250 to the other side so we're going to add 250 to both sides that way these cancel each other out over here when i add these two together you have to make 250 250 over one and then multiply the numerator and denominator by seven that gives you this guy right here this is the same as 250 i just changed it so i had a common denominator that way i can add these two together now and this is what i get as my slope intercept form again both of these equations are the equation of this green trend line one's in slope intercept one's in point slope now what we're going to do is we're going to estimate the attendance at U.S. theme parks in 2005. So what I need to do is I'm going to take my equation of my trend line that I just got and I'm going to plug in 2005 for my x because remember years are going to be on my x axis therefore I plug in 2005 for x. Once I do that I'm going to simplify this. When I simplify remember 2005 is the same thing as 2005 over 1 so I multiply 2005 to the 40 1 to the 7. Now I simplify these. I can subtract the numerators, leave it over 7. If I were then to divide this in a calculator, I get approximately 335.7. Now, what does that mean? Don't leave this as your answer. Remember, this is the attendance in millions of people. So what that means, in the year 2005, there were approximately 335.7 million people who attended U.S. theme parks. Who did Saruman get engaged to? Saru Woman! <laughs> That's terrible. You try. Okay, so here we're doing the exact same thing, except we're comparing this time years to the revenue. We're ignoring the attendance. We don't care about the attendance. So let's get rid of that. That way it's not distracting us. Sweet. Now what we're going to do is we're going to first make our scatter plot. Again, the year is going to be on our x-axis. The revenue in billions of dollars, that's going to be on our y-axis. Now what we can do is plot these points. 1990, comma, 5.7. We go over to 1990 up to 5.7. Put a point. 1992, comma, 6.5. Put a point. 1994. 4, 7.0, put a point. 1996, 7.9, put a point. 1998, 8.7, put a point. 2000, 9.6, put a point. 2002, 9.9, .9, put a point. 2004, 10.8, put a point. And then 2006, 11.5, put a point. So you can see this is clearly a strong positive correlation. What we're going to do is we're going to draw our trend line. We're going to draw a line that goes through these points as best as we can. Next, we're going to create the equation of this trend line. Remember, to do that, we need to pick two points on the line. Remember, we don't have to pick any points that are on our table. We just need to pick two points that are on our line that we drew. Next, we're going to use the slope formula to find the slope between these two points. So let's do that. Remember the slope formula? Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 over X sub 2 minus X sub 1. So we pick one of these to be X sub 1 comma Y sub 1 and the other one to be X sub 2 comma Y sub 2. Plug them into their corresponding spot in the slope formula. We simplify. We end up getting 35 over over 100, which simplifies to 7 over 20. So the slope of our trend line is going to be 7 20ths. Now what we can do is create the equation of this line by using a point and a slope. So our point, we'll just choose the x sub 1 comma y sub 1, and our slope, we just calculated. We plug those into point slope form. So 1992 goes in for x sub 1, 6.5 goes in for y sub 1, and 7 20ths goes in for your m. Now we have the point slope form of the equation of this green trend line. This is perfect for me. I love this, okay? But if your teacher wants you to put it in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, we have to distribute the slope and then add 6.5 to both sides. So let's do that. Let's distribute the slope to our x and to the negative 1992. Again, when you multiply 720s by 1992, you need to make 1992 over 1. That way you multiply 1992 to your 7 and then 20 to your 1. Now what you can do is simplify this by adding 6.5 to both sides because we want to get y by itself. So it's in y equals mx plus b form. To add these two together, you need to give them a common denominator. So we're going to take 6.5 over 1, multiply the numerator and denominator by 20, and you end up getting 130 over 20. Now you can add these two together, and you end up getting y is 
equal to 720s x minus 690.7. This is the slope intercept form of our green trend line. Again, both of these are equations of our green trend line. They will now allow us to answer the second part of the question, which says estimate the revenue at US theme parks in 2020. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to take our equation that we just found of our trend line, and now we can estimate what the revenue is at US theme parks in 2020. So we're going to take this 2020, plug it in for x, because that's going to be time. Now we need to multiply these two together. So we make this 2020, 2020 over 1. We multiply the 2020 times the 7, 20 times the 1. When you do that, you get this. Now, this actually simplifies. If you divide 14,140 by 20, you end up getting 707. We then subtract these two numbers, and we get approximately 16.4. Now, don't leave this as your answer. You were asked a question. Estimate the revenue at U.S. theme parks in 2020. And it's not $16.4, right? It's revenue in billions of dollars. So it's actually $16.4 billion in revenue that we are estimating U.S. theme parks will generate in 2020.